if you know about active focus and you figure out normalize and differential, then you're using active focus while you're pursuing life. And then active focus becomes very easy. And then it's not like, oh shit, I need to go outside for an hour. Welcome back. Let's talk about fundamentals today. And we'll try to keep it short again and to the point. One of the things that comes up frequently and the big difference between people that consistently improve the eyesight and get all the way back to 2020 and ones that struggle and progress more slowly is how they spend their time. And we all have obligations, right? Like my obligation apparently right now is making this video, but we've got jobs, like we've got things to do. We, uh, there's times to spend in front of screens. The problem is that we spend a lot of our non-work time also looking at screens, right? Like how many hours do you look at Facebook a day or YouTube or Instagram or whatever other kind of media that is passively consuming a replacement for actual living? And that really is, I think, a huge, huge thing where you can improve your eyesight like nobody's business like all the the effort and how quickly can i improve and why this and why that a lot of the the technical questions melt away once you address that main screen addiction that we all have and i have it i mean it's raining outside right now so i'm making a video i'm trying to be productive instead of just browsing the internet but it's really easy to get this replacement high from just experiencing the life that somebody else is living and sharing on YouTube or whatever. So the challenging part and the most rewarding part is finding something that makes you want to go do something other than spend time in front of screens. And I've, I've spent a ton of time over the years exploring things that might be fun. And once you get into it, like once you get into the research process and exploratory process of finding things to take you away from screens you kind of I don't want to say addicted but you definitely start to appreciate that like I remember I lived in a, a near the ocean I bought a boat at one point I, I spent a lot of time outside after I bought a boat and it was just a small 18 foot not that expensive boat highly budget dependent way live dependent but I lived near the ocean and that I mean countless hours that I didn't spend inside because of that and then friends would know I had the boat and everybody would be like hey let's go out on the boat and people would bring toys and we'd go to hang out on islands like my weekends basically were spent pretty much entirely outside I bought a another example I bought this folding kayak at one point that was brilliant it was made out of this like membrane-y stuff and then this wood skeleton you put this wood skeleton together and pull the membrane over it and you'd have this kayak and it would easily fit in the trunk of your car, so you could just take it anywhere. I also bought a folding bike. Uh, that was pretty cool, Bike Friday, if you're in the US. Very cool stuff. So I put the folding bike and the, the, uh, the kayak into the trunk and some tent gear and just go out for the weekend and find interesting places to use those kinds of outdoor toys. And I really got into that for a while. I did. I took hang gliding lessons which you can do in flatland too, and is not as expensive as you'd imagine. I took up paragliding, diving for a while, diving lessons, like all that stuff takes up a fair bit of time. And you have to remember, it's ultimately not, you don't want to think too far ahead. You don't want to be like, well, I'm not going to use this all the time. You just want something that will take an hour, take you an hour away from a screen or two hours or five hours or a weekend and then build up from there. Don't be defeatist. People do this. Like I remember from the, from the diving example, people are like, yeah, but I don't really blah and I don't dive that much and in the winter, don't go that far. Just be like, hey, if I took a diving course, how many hours will I spend not in front of a screen doing other stuff? And baby steps, right? Like don't look at the top of the mountain, look at the next step in front of you, which is, try to get away from the screen. And that can be super fun. And that, like the paragliding got me into a lot of traveling. And I think overall that, that, that experience of finding ways to enjoy life changed my direction a lot. I mean, I went from living in front of screen and only thinking about money to just being the kind of vagabondy thing I am now. Like it, it over the course of years, and this was not 
purely a vision improvement thing, but at some point you reach this tipping point where the living life takes over, which for most people is not the default mode of operation. The default mode of operation is go to work, do as you're told, go home, pay your mortgage, play on YouTube. But slowly, like, you know, if you take the diving course and you assemble your folding kayak and canoe, kayak, whatever, like, once you start down that path and they find another thing, like maybe you take an archery class, like I hear people are really into the archery thing. There's a million little things that will slowly pull you away from that screen addiction. And once you reach a tipping point where real life is more interesting than a screen, just a lot of things change. I took up cycling for a while. That was really interesting. Like all the, not just the cycling itself, you make new friends, you meet people, there's meetups, and then you get into like, bike nerdy things and you start working on your bike and it's just like all slowly you're reclaiming hours of your life that just becomes a theme at least for me it became a theme like last year or so I took up kite surfing like that was kind of a, I was I had run out of new things to do and that's become a new fascination and again it doesn't have to take over your whole life but you slowly want to work your way to tilt the balance towards living your own life as a, instead of being a worker drone and the rest of the time sitting in front of screens. You can't do it all at once, but you can make little baby steps in that direction. And if you do, this vision improvement stuff that you learn becomes kind of background secondary. If you know about active focus and you figure out normalize and differential, then you're using active focus while you're pursuing life. And then active focus becomes very easy. And then it's not like, oh shit, I need to go outside for an hour. It becomes a, well, I'm paddling with my canoe through the marsh and I have to see, find the way. So you're using active focus all the time. And then you get enough of it to where your eyesight improves notably. Like that's really the ultimate, the circle. You know, you, for whatever reason you found in myopia, for whatever reason you decided that maybe you want to improve your eyesight, Ultimately, what really will improve your eyesight is reclaiming your life. And once you reclaim your life, your eyesight improves very easily because you already have the right methodology. It's not eye exercises, it's not unicorn farming. Like the, the theory sound, the approach is sound. And now when you apply it by living, then it all comes together. So the, the one thing that I recommend the most to people, and I think that I don't really actively cover enough in myopia is start pursuing life like start finding something that sounds semi-interesting you know like i have a lot of american viewers so like you know like americans love guns like maybe go to a shooting range i'm not saying all americans love guns i guess it's a touchy subject now but just like anything that even if you're not like totally sold on the idea into it just try it out because it takes a couple hours away from screens. And the idea is not you have to be into X thing, but now you already spent some time away from it. So the chances that you'll get away from this thing ultimately is the end goal. So there. And that's also part of the reason I oftentimes sprinkle in real life stuff in these videos, even though it seems kind of out of place. It's just kind of my thing of, hey, you know, this is not about don't go to the next YouTube video. You know what I mean? Don't go scrolling through Instagram. Scroll through what's in my town area stuff that I could go do that could be interesting. And that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.